Neurons are the functional units of the nervous system. Considered as the cells of the mind, they specialize in detecting changes in the environment and in responding to them. Neurons also coordinate the functions of the organism themselves. In broad terms, they consist of a cell body, or soma, and extensions of two types, dendrites and axons. To understand the importance of these structures, note that the body nerves are large groups of many axons. Neurons communicate through their extensions. The areas where this communication takes place are the synapses. A single neuron can be connected to many others by multiple synapses. As an example, we shall describe a simplified model of communication between two neurons. The most common synapses are chemical, although there are also electrical synapses. Both types have three common elements, the presynaptic neuron, the synaptic cleft or space, and the postsynaptic neuron. These names are used to refer to the flow of information traveling between cells. In this example, the presynaptic neuron transmits the message to the postsynaptic neuron. In chemical synapses, at the end of the presynaptic axon, there are vesicles or reservoirs with the molecules that will take the signal to the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron membrane. Like all cells, neurons have a cellular membrane that seals them off from the environment. Thanks to this separation, inside the neuron there is a higher concentration of potassium ions and proteins, while on the outside there are high concentrations of sodium and chlorine. To produce their effects, chemical messengers bind to cellular receptors. This binding property is known as affinity, while efficacy refers to their capacity to generate physiological effects. Agonist substances have high affinity and high efficiency, efficiency while antagonist substances have high affinity and low efficiency. Neurons understand and use an electrical language based on the charges from the ions and molecules that are inside and outside the cellular membrane. When a neuron is quiet or silent, its internal environment has more negative electrical charges than the outside. These conditions change abruptly when the neuron interacts with others. A single neuron can communicate with many others at the same time and can understand the final message because it integrates the multiple electrical signals it receives. Based on the changes of permeability to specific ions of its cellular membrane, neurons decode differences in the distribution of internal electrical charges. A positively charged environment produces a wave of electrical information called action potential, which propagates rapidly in and in all directions within the cell and also through the axon. If this action potential reaches an electrical synapse, the current passes directly to the postsynaptic neuron. But if it is a chemical synapsis, the change in the electrical charge opens some pores in the membrane of the neuron through which the calcium ion enters. This higher concentration of calcium inside the presynaptic neuron sets off the start of the neurotransmission.
communication between neurons is highly efficient either among them or with other types of cells through chemical or physical mechanisms, but rarely by direct physical connections. In general, the most common way of doing this is via indirect chemical contacts, which is where neurotransmission occurs. During this process, the action potential enables signals and messages to spread among the neurons and the neuronal networks. The neurotransmitters released into the synaptic cleft interact with specific receptors which causes changes in the postsynaptic neuron. Due to their affinity and specificity, the binding of the neurotransmitter molecules with their receptors is comparable to the way a door key operates in the lock. The neuronal receptors recognize the tridimensional configuration and chemical characteristics of neurotransmitter molecules. Neurons release the neurotransmitter into the synaptic space via the process of exocytosis, which consists of several steps. The molecular compound formed with the union of the neurotransmitter and its receptor remains active for a short period. There are two known ways in which the action of the neurotransmitter can be halted, reuptake and degradation. In reuptake, the presynaptic neuron uses membrane proteins, reuptake, reuptake pumps or transporters, which collect re the released neurotransmitter and reintroduces it into the vesicles of the presynaptic neuron, so that it can be used again in the future. In degradation, specific enzymes inactivate the neurotransmitter and convert it into a different compound. The presynaptic neurons send messages that, depending on the neurotransmitter released and the functions of the neurons involved, may stimulate or inhibit the postsynaptic neuron. The outcome is determined by the sum of the many stimuli that are received. Neurons have specialized protein structures that because of their specific interaction with other chemical substances serve the process of cellular communication. The substances that bind with receptors are known as ligands. For neuronal communication, we shall discuss two large group of receptors. Ionotropic, when activated by their ligand, the tridimensional structure and configuration of their proteins change, allowing the ions, whether negatively charged as chloride or positively charged, as calcium, potassium, and sodium, to pass through. They are also known as ionic channels. The metabotropic are formed by long chains of amino acids that pass seven times through the cellular membrane. The interaction with their ligand activates or inhibits specific proteins, like G proteins linked to the cellular membrane, which are involved in the production of other molecules such as AMP cyclic. Neurotransmitters are the interlocutors in conversations between neurons. In general terms, they are substances that have a simple chemical structure grouped under three broad categories, amino acids, amines, and peptides. These substances intervene in the communication between neurons that control very different functions. Dopamine is a catecholaminergic neurotransmitter 
that participates in regulating movement, emotion, affect, and neuroendocrine communication. GABA is the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Noradrenaline or norepinephrine is a derivate product of the tyrosine amino acid. In, it takes part in alertness, level of consciousness, motivation, sensory perception, regulation of the sleep wakefulness cycle, appetite, sexual behavior, and neural mod modulation of learning, memory, and reward mechanisms. Serotonin is synthesized mainly in the raphe nuclei of the brainstem, which projects through the central nervous system, with greater density in the vasal ganglia and the limbic structures. Serotonin regulates a wide variety of effects mediated by binding to specific membrane receptors, which are present in both the central and peripheral nervous system, and also in many other tissues of the intestine, cardiovascular system, and blood cells. Alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs can produce positive reinforcing effects, which makes people use them repeatedly. In 1954, James Olds and Peter Milner conducted studies in rats, in which they observed that electrical stimulation of the hypothalamus and some associated ray regions might act as a reinforcer or reward for behaviors. These experiments helped the researchers to map the pleasure center in the brain. Nowadays, we know that the reinforcement comes from direct or indirect activation of the mesocortical limbic dopamine system, represented in this figure. Drugs can overstimulate this pathway artificially, making people repeat this behavior. The brain is wired to ensure repetition of the activities that sustain life by linking them with pleasurable, rewarding, or gratifying actions. Neural networks memorize which stimuli activate the reward system fostering future repetition without actively thinking. Some psychoactive substances can release 2 to 10 times more dopamine in the reward circuit than the amount released by natural elements like eating and sexual intercourse. This consequence occurs almost immediately when smoking or injecting drugs and their effects can last much longer than those produced by natural reinforcers. Such a big reward deeply motivates people to use drugs again and again. 